Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at pH curves for acid-base titrations. We're going to outline the four standard shapes of pH curves for titrating a base against an acid. A strong acid with a strong base, a strong acid with a weak base, a weak acid with a strong base, and finally, a weak acid with a weak base. We will also talk about the buffering zone in a pH curve. Titrations, the difference between equivalents and endpoints, and using pH curves to find the Ka of a weak acid have all been outlined in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about pH curves, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. A titration is a practical technique that can be used to find the concentration of a solution of an acid or base. An acid or base solution with a known concentration is added from a burette to a base or acid solution with an unknown concentration in a conical flask. An indicator changes colour when the pH of the solution suddenly changes, and we use the volume of acid or base added at this point to find the concentration of the solution initially in the flask. pH is a scale used to represent how acidic or alkaline a solution is, and is based on concentration of H plus ions. A solution with a pH of 7 is considered neutral at 298 Kelvin, and a solution with a pH lower than 7 is described as acidic. The lower the pH, the more acidic the solution, and the higher its concentration of H plus ions. A solution with a pH above 7 is considered alkaline, and there is a higher concentration of hydroxide ions than H plus ions. The higher the pH value, the higher the concentration of hydroxide ions, and the more alkaline it is. A buffer solution is able to minimise changes to its pH when small amounts of acid or base are added to it. Acidic buffer solutions are made up of a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. An equilibrium system is formed between molecules of the weak acid, conjugate base ions and H plus ions. If more H plus ions or a base is added to the solution, the position of equilibrium will move to try and keep the H plus ion concentration constant. And this means the pH changes only slightly. Recap done, let's go. During a titration, the pH of the solution in the conical flask or beaker under the burette will change. As a base is added to an acid, for example, the pH of the solution will increase. If we actually measure and plot a graph to show how the pH changes as more base gets added, we get an interesting shape called a pH curve. For example, if sodium hydroxide solution, a strong base, is added to hydrochloric acid, a strong acid, the curve looks like this. If you track how the pH changes, there is a sudden rapid change where the solution appears to almost go straight from acidic to alkaline. It is this rapidly changing part of the pH curve that we are really interested in with a titration. It is at this point that the solution is switching from acid to alkali. In other words, it is during this moment that all the acid molecules that were in the flask at the start have reacted with added hydroxide ions. There are no acid molecules left to react and any more hydroxide ions being added just make the solution alkaline. There are four main shapes of pH curves for titrations that you should be comfortable with and able to recognise. The addition of a strong base to a strong acid, the addition of a weak base to a strong acid, the addition of a strong base to a weak acid, and the addition of a weak base to a weak acid. In all four of these scenarios, we are adding base to an acid, meaning the solution will change from being acidic pH below 7, and end alkaline, pH over 7. The starting and final pHs are based on the type of acid and base being used. For strong acids, the pH would likely start around the 0 to 2 mark, depending on the concentration of acid being used. And for weak acids, the pH would likely start around the 3 to 6 mark, again depending on the exact weak acid and its concentration. Equally, if a strong base is used, the pH will end up somewhere very high, near the 12 to 14 mark, and if a weak base is used, a bit lower, probably around 8 to 11. 
If you're unsure as to why this is the case, please check the video on acids and bases. In it, the terms strong and weak acid and base are explained. Check the links in the description below. The equivalence points of all will be in the middle of the sharp rising pH, with the exception of the weak base to weak acid, which we'll talk about in a minute. One of the most interesting curves to investigate is the addition of a strong base to a weak acid. In this graph, we can see a sharp increase in the pH initially, and then the pH change is very gradual, before bang, it suddenly changes again. This region of minimal change in pH is referred to as the buffer zone. In the weak acid solution at the start, a small percentage of weak acid molecules, HA, are dissociated, and this means there are also H plus ions and conjugate base ions, A minus, present. An equilibrium forms between the three. As the concentration of H plus and A minus ions are the same and very low, the position of equilibrium is based on both the A minus and H plus concentration. However, if a strong base, sodium hydroxide for example, gets added, hydroxide ions will react with the molecules of the weak acid, forming water and conjugate base ions, quickly increasing the concentration of A minus ions in the solution. This means the concentrations of HA molecules and A minus conjugate base ions soon become much larger than H plus ion concentration in the solution, and this enables it to start acting as a buffer system. As more OH minus ions get added, they continue to react with H plus ions in the solution to form water, and this would cause the H plus ion concentration to decrease. However, the position of equilibrium between HA, H+, and A- will shift to try and counter this change by more HA molecules dissociating. This tops back up the H+, ion concentration in the solution. As a result, the H+, ion concentration stays roughly the same, and the pH changes only a little bit each time more base gets added. pH change is minimized by the buffer system just like for a normal buffer solution. Eventually, the concentration of HA starts to fall too low for the equilibrium system to cope, and bang, this is when the pH starts to increase rapidly again. If you're at all unsure about how the buffer is working here, please check the video on buffers, the link is in the description below. There is a point in this curve where the concentration of HA and A- will actually be the same. This is referred to as the half equivalence point, and should be reached when half the final volume of base is added for the titration. The half equivalence point can be used to find the Ka of the weak acid being used. This has been covered in a separate video, again check the links in the description below. There is no buffer zone in a strong acid and strong base titration as the strong acid fully dissociates and no equilibrium system between acid, H plus ions and conjugate base ions gets established, meaning no ability to minimize a change in pH. For a weak acid and weak base titration, the pH curve is a little bit of, well, a mess. <laughs> there is no sudden change in pH around the equivalence point, where the curve kind of kinks in the middle. This lack of sudden pH change means indicators can't be used to find the equivalence point easily, and as a result, weak acid and weak base titrations aren't very practical to carry out. So, to summarize, as a base gets added to an acid in a titration, the pH of the solution increases. The change in pH is based on the amount of base added and can be shown on a graph. There are four standard shapes for pH curves where a base is being added to an acid in a titration. Strong acid and strong base, strong acid and weak base, weak acid and strong base, and weak acid and weak base. The starting and ending pH is based on the type of acid and base being used. Strong acid titrations will start at a lower pH, usually between 0 and 2, than weak acids, usually between 3 and 6 and strong base titrations will finish at a higher pH, usually between 12 and 14, compared to when a weak base is used, usually between 8 and 11. All depending here on the concentrations of acid and base used. 
For weak acids, as a strong base gets added, conjugate base ion concentration increases and this creates a small buffer mixture of weak acid molecules, HA, conjugate base ions of the acid, A-, and H plus ions. This buffer mixture helps minimize the change to pH of the solution as more base gets added, meaning only a very small change in pH occurs as the volume of base added increases. This can be seen as a buffer zone on pH curves for weak acids with strong bases, where the pH of the solution doesn't really increase as more base gets added. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.